So, um, hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, explainer session. I'm Pratham Sikka and I'm thrilled to have uh, Enrique Lacal with us today. Enrique is the community lead and core maintainer at Hyperledger Firefly, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Enrique is a full stack software engineer at Kaleido with a rich background in blockchain, deep learning, and even self-driving cars. He has previously led a team of software developers at IBM, contributing to the Watson Orchestrate project and has a strong foundation in the in server-side development and Swift. So welcome Enrique and thank you for joining us. Hey guys, thanks Pratham for, for taking the time and organizing this. Well, yeah, as Pat mentioned, I'm Enrique. Um, yeah, I'm the community lead and maintainer of Firefly, High Pleasure Firefly, and I'm a full stack software engineer working uh, at Kaleido. We are, we are a blockchain enterprise company. Cool. Let's dive in. Um, yeah, so uh, Enrique, could you just start by introducing yourself and your role in the Firefly project? So yeah, so I'm Enrique Lacal. Um, I've been I've been the community lead uh, of Firefly for a while now. And I'm also a maintainer. So I think I would split my my work in a couple of different roles as part of the High Pleasure Firefly project. One of it is running the community, so answering questions on Discord, um, reviewing issues that people raise on different uh, repositories of Firefly. We have a, a few of those. We'll explain in, in a later. Um, reviewing PR, reviewing codes, and and merging different contributions from different uh, maintainers or different new contributions to the project. But also part of it is also writing code, right? Being a maintainer of it, contributing new code to it uh, for new features. And finally running things like this, right? Contributing to Q and A's and webinars and sessions with the, Hy the Hyperledger Foundation team and running community calls, right? So really um, going to different events as well and talking about Firefly. So some of it is running the community and making sure the community is healthy, answering questions on Discord some of it is reviewing code and merging code and just being a, de a developer. And another of it is also being more of like a DevRel type of person, talking to people about Firefly, joining webinars and workshops and, and events and, and all that. Got it. Um, so I believe you're doing everything it takes to uh, make Firefly get the initial traction and the considerable attention which they deserve. So. Um, yeah, if we talk about Firefly, uh, for a newbie like me, uh, what is Firefly, when was it developed, and what was the initial goal of the project, and what does it aim to solve? So, um, yeah, so a little bit of con context of why was it introduced and who initiated it. So, as mentioned earlier uh, in the introduction, I work for a company called Kaleido, um, and it was Kaleido who introduced this project and open sourced it into the Hyperledger Foundation. So it was about three years ago uh, where this project was open sourced. And uh, the idea it's trying to solve is it sits as the middleware and the gateway into Web3 for different organizations. So over the many years that Kaleido has been running Web3 blockchain projects and, and building projects for customers, we've realized that most of the time for software engineers and developers is spent writing this, this middleware in their applications. This middleware, which is responsible for submitting transactions and listening to events from the blockchain in a reliable way, signing transactions, which, which makes it very tiring for developers to have to reinvent the wheel every time and write that type of software. So that's why we introduced Firefly, which is a very blockchain agnostic middleware, and it allows um, different organizations to uh, enter the Web3 world from a Web2 background and be able to talk to different blockchain systems and, and blockchain ecosystems. Well, one of the problems that it solves is an organizational problem as well, which a lot of organizations um, having to learn about Web3 and having to build such a layer is quite complex from an engineering perspective. So having to build a stack to reliably submit transactions and reliably listen to things on chain and being able to sign transactions is quite uh, a challenge for, for a lot of businesses. So open sourcing this and allow them to build on top of it really rapidly accelerates them building their own business logic on top of it. So that's a, a really uh, important piece of Firefly. Another piece of Firefly that aims to solve is 
uh, enabling consortiums and multi-party systems to be able to mess, uh, communicate between different members of uh, a consortium system where obviously they're using different blockchains or the same blockchains to communicate in this consortium network, also having the ability to send messages privately. So it was created to really radically simplify and drive adoption of blockchain technologies for these organizations and companies and not have to reinvent that wheel that we talked about to submit transactions and listen to events from the blockchain and really speed up um, organizations and engineering cycles, but also to drive new use cases such as consortium and, and build solutions that way. Got it. So uh, use it without uh, having the intricacies of blockchain and yeah, just uh, make sure you integrate it and uh, more than that, solving the problem of uh, like uh, Web2 developers not having the entire context of blockchain as a service. So yeah, got it. Yeah, so one of, one of the things we, we did in Firefly was we can generate uh, Web2 API, so Swagger or Open API, HTTP APIs for smart contracts. So you can deploy a smart contract into, for example, um, Ethereum or Fabric, and, and through Firefly, you can say, hey, I want to generate an interface for that contract, and I want to generate an API for that contract. So now, instead of having to use a tool like Web3.js or different blockchain tools to sign the transactions submitted directly through maybe JSON RPC calls to a chain, you can use the Firefly APIs and onboard all your Web2 developers that are used to Open API to be able to sign and send transactions, and Firefly will sign those transactions for you. So it becomes a lot simpler to manage smart contracts and, and invoke smart contracts to Firefly. All right, great, great. Thank you for that insight. That sounds fantastic uh, moving forward. So uh, other than transactions also, a lot of more uh, use cases in the real world. So yeah. Yes. So uh, let's, let's drive the discussion over here. What are some real world use cases where the key features of Firefly have been effectively implemented. Could you uh, give an example of some organizations which are currently using Firefly and what are they doing and what are they able to accomplish? Yeah, so um, as part of, of, of working for Collider, we work with a wide variety of, of different companies across different sectors. And I would encourage you to, to look at our website, Collider.io. We have loads of logos in there and loads of companies and loads of um, scenarios and use cases um, that, that we've worked towards and really real several real world scenarios where we use Firefly um, in production uh, for these companies. But I'll give a few examples um, in, in different in different sectors. One of the ones that is quite famous where blockchain really can can help solve a lot of problems is in the supply chain management space, right? Where you're trying to track goods in real time, you want to verify shipment, you, you actually want to streamline processes right across your supply chain. And in those scenarios, what you want to do is you want to build applications where members of that supply chain um, management uh, pipeline are part of the same blockchain system, right? They have a source of truth on the blockchain around where their goods at and there's transparency in the blockchain. And as part of that, um, these companies using su for supply chain don't want to s learn about having to write their own layer, as we spoke about, to be able to manage those transactions and make sure they just want to write their, their supply chain specific um, knowledge and, and, and business logic so you, they can use Firefly to do those sorts of things, even to write to multiple blockchains if that's the case for, for the whole chain. Another one is healthcare, right? Healthcare is really important, right? There's a lot of, lots of healthcare systems in the world. Um, and where Firefly could help is in that multi-party area that we talked about, where you can do data coordination. So a lot of the healthcare records need to be private, right? And, and you might have different healthcare institutions. In a consortium, you might have different healthcare insurance providers or different um, organizations, and they might be using blockchain as a source of truth. But what they want is privacy, right? They want the privacy over their patient records um, to regulate with the different privacy uh, regulations in different areas of the world. So they can use the multi-party part of Firefly to send private messages, but at the same time use a blockchain as a source of truth of those messages being sent. And finally, another example of a consortium is an energy sector. So very similar to the healthcare one, it can be used to share information about 
um, maybe energy usages across different companies. So we've worked with different energy consortium companies to use Firefly, and we've run this in production for a number of years now um, to allow them to build their applications on top of Firefly. So yes, I, I think I, I put a link, um, I think you'll share later different links after the Q&A into the list of companies um, using Firefly um, as part of Kaleido or just as part of the open source. And yeah, be it a private blockchain use case or a public or permission blockchain, uh, Firefly handles it all. And you can mm -hmm. do pretty much uh, anything with uh, as far as transactions and not just transactions, but security and messaging and uh, tracking stuff is concerned. Cool. Yep. So moving to the next question, uh, how does Firefly support enterprise blockchain applications and what are the benefits? Uh, cool. Uh, as you discussed, one benefit in the construction sector which you're using that they can track all their things. And uh, the other one you mentioned was the healthcare aspect of it, like privacy in the records of the patient. That thing is leveraged using Firefly. Uh, please build a little more upon this. Uh, what are the benefits? If I would want to list benefits, then yeah. Sounds good. So yeah, so as we mentioned, obviously Firefly is open source. So that's a key benefit uh, for enterprise yeah. blockchain companies trying to adopt Firefly. Um, the idea is it really simplifies your tokenization landscape. Um, so being able to rapidly build tokenization solutions, which is quite um, common nowadays and really popular in different enterprises. Another feature um, of Firefly is that it really enhances you to interoperate with different multi-chains. So when you want to have uh, your application talking to different chains of, for example, different Ethereum chains or Fabric chains, you can use Firefly to talk with those different chains and do some sort of interop where you're moving assets and tokens across different chains. It can really help you as a middleware to, to talk to one familiar API and be able to interact with multiple chains. And as we spoke about, it really accelerates the development of blockchain applications. So instead of uh, an enterprise having to spend the cycles understanding uh, blockchain and the, how transactions work and how to do signing, et cetera, they can use Firefly to accelerate um, the development of their internal applications. So yeah, so the, the primary mission of Firefly, I think we, we, we can cover it as well. Um, it's all about me being able to invoke your smart contract logics and then stream those events effortlessly back to your application. So it, it will, under the covers was really important uh, and, and the core um, engine that is quite a sophisticated engineering piece is that idea to coordinate between different messaging uh, platforms. So the idea that we can, Firefly Core will coordinate between the data sent off chain as part of this private messaging that we spoke about for privacy and what occurs on the chain. So it will coordinate the transactions that happen on the blockchain with the private messaging and that allows companies to build workflows and orchestrate workflows on top of that um, orchestration that Firefly does. Really the, the Firefly core engine is both an orchestration engine to orchestrate transactions and messages and also allows you to send uh, transactions into the, the chain if you're not using just the, the multi-part, if you're using the gateway mode. Um, yeah, that that's that's basically it. I think that the main key is just for enterprises, um, the benefits is you just rapidly on a stack that's been proven in production, that's been open source, so there's no lock-in, that is very pluggable, so it allows you to build on top any enterprise um, layers that businesses want, um, and that is, has a community behind it, it can really accelerate uh, the development of Web3 applications. Cool. And uh, one question which is coming to my mind currently is that, uh, like, is it agnostic of whatever tech stack you are using? Because do we have SDKs for each language? For example, if we have, if I have a Java application and an application built in uh, Next.js or say five different tech stack. So how will I ensure that as swiftly I can connect Firefly to one tech stack? Like, I can connect it well to any other uh, application with considerable ease. So is it language agnostic or do I need to do something else? So that's a great question. Um, so we have a Node.js SDK. So we have an SDK for JavaScript developers to be able to interact uh, with the Firefly APIs. All of, of Firefly can be interacted to different APIs. And I think one of the things that is, is in the roadmap 
uh, for the project is to have a Java SDK. So we've, we've seen that we have a lot of consumers that uh, want to use Java, especially as the underlying sometimes um, blockchain clients such as Hyperledger Best who are written Java, we're getting more Java developers uh, involved. So having something like a Firefly Java SDK is definitely something that I see that could come into the Hyperledger project to enable uh, more developers. Um, but the idea is that, yes, it's, it's, it's an API. So what these SDKs are doing is just interacting with the APIs and understanding the data coming back. So decoding the different types of messages and events and, and identities and transactions that, that Firefly exposes. Got it. So even Hyperledger has so many different projects under its umbrellas that uh, like they have not left any tech stack, any major tech stack. That, that also it's meaningful because people can contribute irrespective of whichever tech stack they have come uh, like knowledge and expertise in. For example, anyone who is familiar with Python or anyone who's a Java developer or someone who finds his core in JavaScript, everyone has like they have project for everyone to contribute to. So we yeah. have exactly. Yep. Cool. Now, yeah, let's switch gears a little bit uh, without getting too technical. Can you give us a high level overview of uh, Firefly's architecture and how components interact with each other? What is the technology like? Not entirely a system design, but a just a top level view of uh, how Firefly works and how the components interact. Sounds good. So I'll give a, a bit of an overview and then I might show a picture um, of, of how these components work. I think it's it's easier to understand when, when there's a picture in front of, of people. Um, so Firefly has a very pluggable architecture. That's, that's how it was designed um, to be extensible to any use case. So it has a Firefly core runtime which is the core piece of engineering. That is what we've called um, Firefly Core. It's a, it's a Firefly repo in Hyperledger. And the idea is this is the key orchestration engine. So it will orchestrate the transactions, the events, the messages, and interact with all the other plugins. So it will interact with, for example, the EVM Connect plugin to send transactions to EVM, or with the Fabric Connect plugin to send Fabric, or with the Tezos Connect to send to Tezos. It will interact with the database layer. It will interact with the messaging layer. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So it will it will be the core orchestrator, and it will also be the one that exposes all the APIs to be able to invoke and create new transactions, submit transactions to smart contracts, um, and it's really the, the the heart of Firefly. Around that, we have, as I mentioned, a set of plugins. Right, we have a plugins for transaction managers to be able to, for different blockchain technologies. We have off off chain messaging tools to be able to send messages between different parties in the system different database supports. We also have different token indexes. So token indexes or connectors um, are specific components in Firefly where you can, um, where we have two of them, which are support the ERC721 uh, and 20 and ERC155 standards to be able to index different types of events. So these are specific Ethereum connectors. So it's a higher level abstraction than just a transaction. You were now talking about minting a, a token or burning a token or creating a pool, et cetera. So we have different pluggable layers. So, and most of the components really are written in Golang and Node.js. Um, so everything's very pluggable, very extensible. We've defined a very good interface. And along with that as well, one important component is a signing piece. So um, signatures of signing transactions can be extended with different maybe HSM technologies in the future to be able to sign transactions like that with different enterprise requirements. So let me see if I can share my screen one second. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen. So this is the one I wanted to share. Um, so as you can see at the bottom, we have the Firefly core uh, Go process. And it the, the gray box will be all the orchestration part. So I'm, it's orchestrating across different plugins um, and it's and it has APIs at the bottom to be able to invoke those plug to those um, those APIs around sending transactions or sending messages or li hey let me subscribe to some events I care about things like that inside that Go process you have the different interfaces so an interface for persistence hey I want to have be able to store data oh tokens let me let, let me teach about different types of tokens oh let me um, connect to different types of blockchain, for example, Ethereum or Fabric, etc., or Corda. Oh, let me um, ha do some identity, right? I want to map this key on chain to an identity I know about in my organization. Data exchange, let me send some data privately. 
public storage. Oh, let me send some data publicly. I want to broadcast, for example, IPFS, some data that I want everyone to know in the system. Or, hey, I, I, I care about events. I want to be able to listen to events through maybe WebSockets or, or webhooks, for example. And on top, the layer at the, at the top is all those external microservices that we call them, those components where you have different types of specific plugins for specific technologies, specific areas, right? So on the left-hand side, plugins for different SQL flavors, Postgres, SQLite, different plugins for tokens, for supporting different token standards, different plugins for different um, blockchain technologies, Fabric, Core, Ethereum. Same thing goes for exchange, right? The data exchange, public data, et cetera. So this is where it's very pluggable, where one of these interfaces uh, at the bottom is a, defines a very generic way of communicating with these plugins. And you can see um, an, an user coming along and contributing, hey, a new way of maybe uh, doing data exchange with a different peer-to-peer -peer technology of sending messages, for example. So I wanted to share that to really understand that it's really pluggable. Um, and there's not really lock-in here, so enterprises come along and contribute their own um, connectors for their own technologies, really. Got it. Cool, awesome. Oh, yeah, so uh, if you can have a macro level overview of the code base and how to go about it so that the contributors can get an idea and the starting point. I guess you'll need the screen for this, this as well, right? I shouldn't have shared it so soon. Oh, yes. Oh. I'll go for it. Um, so let me share my screen again. Sorry about that. So hopefully you can see my screen. It, it does take a while. Cool. Yeah. yeah, now it's visible. If you go to the core Hyperledger repo, right? Um, Hyperledger Firefly repo, there's obviously a, a link to our documentation here, um, to our latest condition, understanding the different Fireflies and, and getting services. And we also have a contributor uh, session. We have a code hierarchy here um, that is also copied into the readme here. Um, and this will explain a little bit how the code is structured on the, on the core Firefly repo. So we have a, a, a entry point, right, for the Firefly. And we have a set of internal packages for an API server, for our open API, um, for documenting our different APIs, right, through Swagger and OpenAPI 3.0. A WebSocket server for being able to listen to events um, from and send events to different consumers. We have an admin section as well. And then what we have here um, are different components for different parts of Firefly. So we have a core runtime orchestrator that's going to orchestrate the different plugins and 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 talk um, for documenting our different APIs, right? Through Swagger and Open API 3.0. A WebSocket server for being able to listen to events um, from and send events to different consumers. We have an admin section as well. And then here um, are different components for different parts of Firefly. So we have a core runtime orchestrator that's going to orchestrate the different plugins and, and, and talk to those plugins. We have different um, components for maybe private messaging and for broadcasting. And this will interact with the different plugins that we've talked about to be able to send those messages and broadcast that to, to public storage. We also have a data manager, so you can upload data to, to Firefly. For example, when you're doing NFTs, you might want to upload a picture of the NFT, or you might want to upload a document to associate with a transaction. So we have a JSON storage and a blob storage um, capability here, et cetera, et cetera. So we can see that there, there are different packages underneath Firefly that each have their own responsibility in terms of, and these are these are just plugin agnostic, okay? These are components that handle a specific um, piece of, of, of the architecture, but then underneath the covers, you will have each plugin specific implementation. So you will have that plugin for Ethereum, right? To talk to the Ethereum connector. So, so this, uh, just to give a bit more, the Firefly core image is one image, and then there's an image for the Ethereum transaction manager, for the Fabric transaction manager. So these interfaces here in code are calling those Ethereum Each. APIs in the transaction manager, either over a WebSocket or over HTTP. So then you will find all the plugin implementations around tokens, 
shared storage, data exchange, API authentication, database interfaces, and so on. And then on top of that, we also have utility functions, right? So we have very shared code for building REST clients and WebSocket clients and translation frameworks, and et cetera. So this is the, the architecture of the core Firefly code, which is the core repo, which I think contains most of the code. Um, and then some of it is, hey, just internals, let's set, set up an, an HTTP server, a WebSocket server, et cetera. Other of it are called uh, ag agnostic components, right? So uh, orchestrators and sending events and managing events and managing messages and sending, uh, storing data and public data. And then at the bottom, you'll have the plugin specific um, code implementations to with different plugins. Yeah. Yes. So implementations, right. yeah. So most of this is written in Golang. I think, all, yeah, all of this is written with Golang. But if you look under the umbrella of Hyperledger and you search for Firefly projects, you will see all the different um, plugins, right? You will see those from Jasper Managers, the Signers, the Exchange, the Helm charts as well for be able to deploy Firefly, the SDKs, etc. So you will see all of all of the different projects. Got it. So. Firefly itself is predominantly Golang, like more than 97% of the code base is Golang, but yeah, we have SDKs for right now JavaScript and in the pipeline for Java and major tech stacks, which industry relevant use cases are there. Got it. Yep, that, that's it. Thank you for the insight on this. Now, yeah, speaking for contributors, how can, if let's say I am a new contributor, so how can I get started with Hyperledger Firefly? What are some set of uh, things I need to take care of? What are some initial things starting from the contribution guide? Like is that where I should get started? Yeah, so definitely there is there's a contributors guide. Um, I'd recommend reading that. Um, it's it's on our website. We can we can link it after the Q and A. Uh, and yeah, there, no experience is needed in blockchain. Um, there's loads to go there as you can you can learn as you go is, is what, what I like, right? You can get engaged, start coding, start asking questions. Um, I've tried my best to find some good first issues across the board. So if you're interested in a specific um, plugin or a specific part of Firefly, there are good first issues that you can take a look at that are relatively challenging for you to start learning about the code base and start having questions but easy enough that it's not overwhelming for you to be able to not get over them and as well if if you don't find anything um that suits your skill set but you still want to be involved just obviously reach out to me on discord there are loads of areas open for contributions right there's documentation and all all sorts of things um but yeah how do you get started well first of all read documentation, understand what Firefly is, read the, the contributing guideline, find good first issues and join the Discord community and get involved, ask questions um, and just try it out, right? Try to build something with it, see what you can do with it and, and, and let me know. Good, so got a few pointers. Uh, read the documentation, uh, read the contribution guide and then filter hashtag first, good first issues and yeah, in case of any any doubt or anything when you get blocked or something uh, reach out to enrique on discord and yeah the community is pretty much Perfect. like really responsive and i see communication going on on discord in full flow so yeah maintainers are really helpful and welcoming uh, what are some areas where contributors can make a significant impact like uh, there are there are code changes then there are uh, documentation changes for example good first issues like documentation may also need some polishing or maybe we need to develop or write steps according to a certain tech stack and um, code contributions, community support. Yeah, I think we have good first issues and for seasoned contributors, uh, could you please shed some light on this aspect of it? Sounds good. So um, yeah, documentation is really an area where it would be good to get more folks, especially if things are not clear for people that are do not come from a blockchain background and also the getting started guides. We have a lot of guides around communicating to different chains and listening to events and minting tokens and sending messages. And yeah, so if, if things have become rusty or things you've tried them, oh, this doesn't work or oh, this thing doesn't work, like awesome. Just, just raise a PR, 
um, change it, uh, test it, and, and, and let me know. Um, other areas, tools, right? We've spoken about the, we have a CLI for Firefly. So we have a CLI to get you started with Firefly, run a stack locally in Docker, compose. Yeah, contribute there, try to add new things to it. Um, new configuration options for, for Firefly, for example. And then SDKs as well, right? We have a, a Node.js SDK. Oh, there's a Java SDK in the pipeline soon. Um, yeah. Or oh, maybe you want to write a new SDK for a different language, for example, right? Feel free, feel free to join and, and, and contribute there. And then, yeah, just for the good first issues, if you find one you like, assign it to yourself, let me know. If I can help you, we can have a chat on Discord around how the next steps are. I can give you pointers in the code. And yeah, I think the community is quite supportive. So if you if you join Discord and you ask questions, you'll get myself or other, other maintainers in the ecosystem. And we have maintainers with different experience, right? We have maintainers in the more the transaction engine experience. If you, if you find an issue there, we have maintainers for token indexes with really a lot of experience there. Uh, Firefly Core maintainers. So we have maintainers across the board that have uh, experience in different areas and will help you become a, a seasoned contributor, hopefully in the future. And then finally, uh, where I would recommend joining is the community calls. So we have a community call every month um where you will learn about new features about new things that are going on and, you, and and there's no dumb questions you can come along and ask about any issue that you've raised or issues that you've assigned to yourself and and, and get to know more people in the community got it so yeah uh tldr is just set up the project locally and try to make sure any changes uh, when you have a look at the documentation you feel that there's something you can add to make sure you do that raise a pr and don't hesitate to lurk in. Just join in any community call. And uh, as he said, no question is stupid. Like, feel free to ask whatever you want to. And yeah, everything is an initiative. You are uh, like looking to get started and the community also wants to welcome you. So yeah. Exactly. I know it can become daunting a little bit because there's a lot of code in Firefly and it can be a complex architecture to, to get started with. Um, but yeah, there's there's great resources out there in our documentation and, and people, maintainers in Discord that will be happy to help you. Well, uh, one question, uh, like, for example, this is a kind of thing when I am trying to contribute to any open source contribute like organization to not get intimidated by the entire code base. What I do as a personal principle is that I try to open the file which has the least lines of code or smallest or the most fundamental aspect and start getting the hang of the project from there on so i start with the smallest particular file that is something i do i don't know whether uh, that's correct or that's an in industry practice but like works for me so yeah what so, would you give as a tip to someone who's getting intimidated by this large code base so um yeah, that's good. Uh, the the way I approach that normally, and I have in the past, is always look for the entry point. That that that's how I do it. So what I'll do is like, oh hey, is this this is an HTTP server? Oh, cool. Let me let me see what roots it has on it. Let let me open the HTTP server file. Okay, instantiate a server. Cool. Oh, it has these roots slash messages slash transactions. Okay, let's let's dig into the message. What 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 does it call? Oh, it calls this thing. Oh, cool. Oh, this is like a like a message handler, cool. Okay, it does this. So it's like, for me, it's like going from like the the entry point of the code. So where are the APIs into the different levels underneath and kind of like peel back the layers of abstraction. And then what you will find with Firefly is you will have an HTTP server, then you will have loads of different components in the middle. Each of those components will call its own abstractions and its own plugins, and then you will just start to understand how like it's a web of things going through the code base. And you can just either take one path, so you go all the way from one API call all the way to the bottom of the stack to see how a message gets written to the database and, and stored, or you can just go, uh, go to all of them and just look at each layer um, together. Cool, yeah, pretty interesting analogy and um, got the insight. Thank you very much for this. Moving forward, we are coming to the mentorship and support section. So yeah, uh, what resources, as we said, community calls is one thing, uh, webinars, events, workshops, and documentation. What would you recommend to someone who wants to start contribution to contributing to Firefly? What are these resources which 
people can uh, look up to definitely um so we have a a youtube playlist with the hyper ledger foundation youtube channel i had a look at it this morning it has a lot of content in there around a lot of the we used to do architecture sessions would recommend watching those um there's loads of of the really really good insights of the architecture of firefly uh by peter for example peter broadhurst um, and andrew richardson and nico greer they, they did a lot of those sessions there's webinars and workshops as well in there so yeah i recommend consuming consuming those um and yeah just trying out the different getting started guides on on the documentation got it and yeah uh, i think we also have this mailing list uh, we have a dedicated mailing list for firefly also right so yeah uh, yes. people can join in a, and a mailing list yeah, through the main list, you get notifications. For example, we did a 1.3.0 uh, release recently, a few months ago. I did a webinar so they can start joining those sessions when they're available. Cool. So we'll add the link in the description, guys. Please uh, join the mailing list so that you don't miss any update when it comes to Firefly or Hyperledger in general. So, yeah, coming to encouraging community engagement. Like, community is the essence of any open source project. So, yeah, how can contributors get involved in the broader Hyperledger community uh, beyond Firefly? So we have so many different projects and yeah. So yeah, so Hyperledger, um, yeah, under, under the Linux Foundation has a lot of different projects um, from EVM clients to identity projects to things like middleware tools such as Firefly and others. I, I think it, it's always good practice to Look at documentation, try the project out. If you're interested in that kind of area, look at those good first issues and just, or if you're shy for a little bit before picking up an issue, look at Discord, you know, add, add that channel to the left-hand side in Discord and then keep an eye on it, right? That's what I do, right? There are projects I, I haven't been involved in Hyperledger that I find interesting and I'll just, oh, from time to time, I'll read the Discord a little bit, see what people are doing, see what people are building, maybe try out some of their tutorials. And then if I really want to get involved, I will probably look for good first issues and in, 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 in those repositories. So Firefly is a graduated project, uh, but it's definitely active, definitely loads of new things going in still, new releases, new features. So even though it got, it's graduated uh, this year, um, loads of things in the pipeline for people to contribute that. Got it. Cool. So. Uh, how important is community feedback to the development of Firefly and how can contributors effectively provide their input? So, yeah, like, I think code reviews will also be an aspect which comes in community feedback, right? Because, for example, I submit a PR and then you review and suggest some changes, I implementing those things. So, yeah, those kinds of things. Yeah, so I see the feedback going both ways, right? I see the feedback from the community towards Firefly. So, Hey, is Firefly solving your problems, right? Do you want anything new in Firefly that you cannot solve today with Firefly, right? Oh, is it is it really hard for me to run Firefly, right? So we've recently improved a lot of our Helm charts to be able to run um, Firefly in a more cloud native Kubernetes deployment because people were asking us, hey, can we can we get this running? So we definitely listen um, to feedback to improve uh, Firefly in in many ways. I'm sure there is. Um, but yeah, for sure, it can also go the other way around. Hey, making maybe teaching people that are not very familiar with Golang how to how to code uh, Golang more effectively as part of Firefly and, and making them think a bit more around how to code against a blockchain, right? How to code um, in an asynchronous way against a blockchain. So yeah, definitely, I would encourage feedback in both directions from the maintainers of Firefly towards new contributors and from just people in the community using Firefly either in just for development, for research purposes, for production use cases, to highlight to us through issues, GitHub issues or through Discord, their problems and maybe propose some solutions. We even have something we call uh, the FIRE, F-I-R, which is the Firefly improvement proposals uh, or requests. Um, so where, where people can request new uh, improvements to Firefly, and we have a process there where you can write a markdown file of new things you'd like to see in Firefly. Probably, right? And if there is some security issues, for example, some uh, API key or something, 
has not been stored in an environment variable some security breach is there if i find some sort of that particular issue uh, where should i uh, like uh, report it because i think that should i mail it to a certain email address that wouldn't be uh, as a github issue as uh, i would particularly think it to be that's a good point yeah so people could email me directly or message me on discord privately that also works um yeah. most of the time um we yeah we, we we get normally emails for that sort of thing um but touch wood we haven't had a lot of uh, security problems in firefly yet um and just because of the nature of it um it wouldn't be that exposed to to different um security breaches so so i guess we operate on the principle of least privilege or something like that has to be essential yep. when when we are operating in such a category and transactional information and things like private uh, data is being taken care of got it yep so yeah uh, as we uh, plan to wrap up um yeah, where can viewers find more information and stay updated on latest developments in firefly and yeah how can the community reach out to you or other maintainers if they have questions or need some guidance so a pretty active discord yeah. community so for the latter i think the word we've used the most is discord and github so yeah discord community is active you can reach out to maintainers there when you have any any questions any issues how can you find more information so we have a release notes for each release we do we have community calls as i mentioned to find stay up to date with the new features the new roadmaps uh roadmap for firefly and yeah, just look at the PRs for the latest development, right? Well, you can, everything's open. So you can go and check the code. You can go and check our fire proposals, um, discussions, issues. We, we really try to every discussion to be in issues and, and always be documented so people can go and, and check. And even on PRs, you will see some very lengthy PRs with loads of discussions and back and forth between different maintainers on, hey, should we do this or should we do that? So that's where you can find information and even I would, you can use tools like watching, right? You can watch different GitHub repos. You can sign up to our mailing list uh, to be able to get notified of, of new things going on. Right. Sounds good. Cool. So yeah. uh, finally, what advice, like one piece of advice you would give to someone interested in contributing to Firefly, but may feel intimidated um so first of all just give it a try right like if if you're building something using an app right or using a web3 app just give it a try try it out um if you find any concerns create an issue reach out to me and and if you still feel intimidated that you think like oh, okay there's a lot to learn about blockchain um i think we give a really good explanation and documentation and entry level into blockchain a little bit into different concepts that you will need to understand in order to contribute. So read documentation. And I know there's a lot of knowledge still in the documentation to grasp and it's, it's hard. And there, there are people that need to be hands on to really understand and, and, and digest the, the information that is written in the documentation. So just reach out to me on Discord or reach out to different maintainers and, and stuff like that. So you can help you um, maybe break down the issue so you can feel less intimidated, maybe walk through the code with you to be able to, for you to to contribute to the project. You got it. Yeah. So cool. I think we have wrapped up with all the questions and yeah. Uh, thank you so much Enrique for this insightful conversation. It's been a pleasure talking to you and I'm sure the listeners have gained a lot of like valuable information from this. Yeah, I would urge all the uh, listeners to you know, not forget to join Hyperledger Firefly community on Discord and to keep up with all the latest updates, make sure you join the mailing list as well. And until next time, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Uh, have a great day and happy contributing. Thanks, Pratham, for organizing it. Cheers, guys.